All right. Good evening and welcome to the uh, May 25th meeting of the Weathersfield Library Board. Uh, we uh, have a quorum. Uh, I guess we'll take attendance. Uh, Anna? There. Hi, here. Laura? Lori, here. That's right. Oh, no. Amanda? Sorry. Here. Mary? Here. And Terry? Yep, here. And I'm here. So we officially have a quorum. Uh, Martha and Peter will not be here tonight. Uh, first item on our agenda is public comment. I see no members of the public. Have we gotten any uh, communications about uh, from the public, Brooke? No, I've received nothing uh, in snail mail and I've received nothing over through the email, through the instructions. On the okay. And, and additions, changes to the agenda. I'm not aware of any. There are none. Okay. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the April 27th meeting? I move that we approve the minutes. And second. Amanda, uh, any discussion, changes? I don't see any. I have none. Very good job, Madam Secretary. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor of approval of the minutes, uh, vote aye. We'll do a roll call vote. Lori? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Terry? Or Terry, were you at the meeting? No. So you'll abstain. Uh, Hannah? Aye. You must have been there. Mary? I wasn't there. Yeah. So Mary abstains and I'm an I. So the minutes are accepted. Uh, town Council liaison report. Kevin probably will not be able to be here, but if he arrives, uh, we will hear the report then. Uh, chairman's report, let me check my texts. Uh, I know Martha did not have very much to add. Uh, Brooke, as I understand, the, the friends have... Uh, approve the library or the summer reading money yes okay. so we we want to uh <clears throat> make a special thank you to the friends uh for that uh we uh really appreciate their contribution uh the uh budget consideration is well, Brooke, you can report on it in, in your report, but we, we don't know any more, I take it, at this point uh, about the town budget. Uh, and the next meetings, uh, just as a reminder, we have a June meeting, which would be the fourth uh, Tuesday in June. Uh, and since nobody's helping me out, I would say it would be the 22nd. 22nd yes. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and I bet we have a, no, we're waiting to set a governance uh, committee meeting, partly, I think, pending the budget uh, uh, decisions. Uh, and Brooke, I, I, are there any other meetings uh, um, I have committee meetings. I think that we have, I can, I would like to tentatively set the date of Wednesday, June 16th for the next governance meeting. Okay. Uh, there's two things that might affect that. One is the library is moving its firewall on the 9th, but if we can't move it on the 9th, the 16th would be another day. And if we're moving a firewall, it means there's we're basically not going to have internet that day in the library at all. Okay. So 
the 16th is actually a backup day. And so that would be one potential thing that could impact it. The other would be is if members of the library board, because it's the last week of last day of school is Monday and the pools open the 16th, that that may not be a day you're looking the first week the kids are out of school. Um, we could look at the 23rd. Although by six o'clock, uh, all those people might be more than ready to have a uh, maybe. I, I mean, so it just okay. Well, let's yeah, let's see how it. You can let us know. Uh, and Michelle's coming to the meeting right now. Okay. <laughs> but that's the only other um, meeting. Okay. Uh, all right. Hi, Michelle. We've held off on anything important till you got here, so don't worry. We're, uh, Sorry, my computer no. was lagging today. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so that that really is that uh, Martha didn't have anything else to uh, to add in her report. Uh, so we would go to the director's report. Okay, and Michelle, I've have I admitted you twice? Okay. Oh. Now we just lost one. No, well, yeah. Okay. Um, so the director's report, uh, the reopening of the library. Uh, recently I had um, Charlie Brown, the director of the Central Connecticut Health District come through and advise me on anything that further needs to be done for reopening, for a safe reopening. Um, and so far we're looking pretty good. Um, and his, and you know, is there anything we can loosen up on and, and that kind of stuff. Um, the advice is to, the big advice is to continue to go slow and steady, but so far we're doing really good. Our, for something like example, like our water fountain, it sounds like a really minor thing. It actually is an important thing. We can open that up for general use, which is wonderful. I mean, it, it, but it's the little things like that um, that we were trying to fine tune. Um, we are looking to expand our hours further. So starting last week and into this week, Wednesday through Saturday, we have been 10 to 5. Um, and starting um, um, and starting next uh, starting next uh, week right after Memorial Day, we will be open all of our regular hours except Sunday. So 10 to nine in the hour, the regular hours are in case nobody remembers anymore, is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, 10 to five. So that's good. very, that's, very exciting. That's um, good news. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we are excited about that. We talked about, um, whether uh, we, the Friends Book Nook, where they sell the books up in front, um, we are looking to perhaps do that. I've been in communication, or the Friends have been in communication with me about can they start that in, um, say, uh, July? And we're looking towards July to start selling those books. In a good year, that can generate between two and $3,000 in revenue, just the book nook alone. Um, and we, and I spoke with him about a book sale and most of you have attended our book sales and kind of know the dynamic it takes place. For those of you who don't, it takes place basically all over the children's level. Um, a lot of libraries that have had book sales have done it outdoors and that would be the ideal. Um, but we're just not, we're not really sure. And he didn't want to say yay or nay to a book sale. I think it would be difficult for whether so library to actually have it outdoors. There would be a lot of manpower involved getting the books from the basement to the, like say the part, if we were to close off half the parking lot. Um, so there is a logistical thing. It's not as easy. Um, a, a lot of the volunteers are seniors they don't have the physical manpower. They have difficulty getting the volunteers that have the physical manpower. And that's been an ongoing problem for years. Um, we, the ramp is, you know, 
put it's it's a wheelchair it's meant for wheelchairs um book trucks fully weighted is quite heavy going down and can run away from you and then there is if you were to say take it out through my office area out through the town hall doors you're going over like brick i don't want to say cobblestone but it's it's not mm -hmm. just smooth concrete and it is sloped more than you think it is and so that logistically is a big problem and out the back there is no ramp out the back um there's steps everywhere and so that presents a problem so um you know we'll just have to kind of see if an outdoor book sale is possible i don't know that it would be or if we could do something inside and just if necessary really control the numbers that go into the children's department on that day but it is difficult because on the on like a sunday bag sale where it's, you know, a bag for $7 or whatever, stuff a bag or whatever they do, you can get up to 200 people in 15 minutes heading straight for the children's department. And that's just too many people to begin with, but it's quite, quite, a, quite the dynamic. So um, Look, for the bag sale, it, it, it people, do, oh yeah, people choose the books and put them in the bag. It's bag, not like, yeah. yeah. So All we're right. just selling the little, the bag. Yeah, yeah, okay. Or the friends are selling the bag. Right. Um, so that's what we have for reopening. Um, union uh, negotiations are uh, ongoing um, with the library's two unions. We're hoping to wrap it up soon, um, but that's, that's as much as I have to share about that. Um, recent programming we've had at the library, um, our weekly preschool programming on Facebook that has an accompanying play and learn kit that's, that um, families can come in and get. Um, that's done by Bree. That's been going in April and continues through the month of May. We recently had a local author, uh, John Christian, did an author talk uh, recently. Um, and we had a backyard composting program um, recently as well. Some upcoming program, the things that we're focused on is we are doing um, several virtual class visits um, for the elementary schools. And then we do a recording for the seventh and eighth grade. Um, and that's really to promote summer reading. So this, during the month of May, we normally have the some first grade, all of third grade and all of seventh grade coming into the building like every other day, all the classes. Um, and so we can't do that now, they're not doing field trips. And so um, right now we're doing them virtually and um, the schools have been very cooperative. So that's uh, wonderful as well. Um, we have an upcoming gardening program, keep, keeping your vegetable garden happy and healthy through the growing season is coming up. I believe that's next Tuesday evening. Um, and finally, we have an upcoming program about bobcats in Connecticut. Um, and so that's part of our uh, summer reading uh, programming. Um, and it, it fits in with the theme of tales and tales is this year's theme, uh, summer reading um, for everybody starts June 14th. Um, every single board member is expected. <laughs> Anna, did you hear that? I'm coming for you, George. Yeah, right? but, but, so, but you can't, it doesn't count books that you started before the 14th. June 14th, George, we should meet at the library, pick out our <laughs> summer reading book together. All right. So, the board minus maybe these two is expected <laughs> to because it's not a contest after all it's not a contest no um and so uh expected to sign up and participate um yeah so Brooke, that's Brooke, forgive me it was tales and tales correct t-a-i-l-s okay. and t-a-l-e-s that's what i thought i just wanted to make sure um we could make it a contest, an internal contest. Oh, it is Lori, already. Close. Lori, Lori was close one year, too. I think she, yeah, I know. Hey, not competitive. <laughs> not competitive at all. And I mean, I didn't even, uh, something for just off the side, uh, the outreach committee, you know, if we entered that, forget Scarecrows on Main. We've already been there, won that year one that we entered. Um, if we do bicycles on Main, it's not even a contest and like i don't even want to say that but like when we i'm sorry when we enter we will win 
that's how we play and so <laughs> and so and but we don't accept the gift from you know the old shopkeepers network that's not appropriate but we want the blue ribbon that's number one prize so um we'll probably get into it next year so as an out future outreach committee um because we're not competitive at the library <laughs> um finances um review of showman and the other in the library account does anybody have questions from the charles schwab statements at all okay don't see any okay um and uh the current review of the budget for fiscal year 2021 the latest the latest financial statement did anybody have any questions we're getting close to wrapping up. So books and other material, we're trying to wrap up that spending. Um, they have till June 1st. My staff begged to have till June 3rd or 4th, um, but we're trying to get things wrapped up so we can get all the bills paid, whatever comes in. We get invoice through middle of July and then we have to get everything paid. And we will probably, it may, I'm gonna talk with Mike O'Neill, we may have to, move around the july meeting or have an additional meeting to time with year-end transfers um right now we are currently and this is if i can pull up the document here real quick show financial we are currently 82 percent spent out payroll runs this week it'll be two percent so we're really by the end of this week be 84 there's a stack of bills in my office that I have to sign, um, you know, every 20,000 is another, like say 1% or thereabouts. Um, I do expect to have money left over at the end. Um, but if you figure that, you know, right now it says 240, I don't have my calculator near me, which is problematic. But um, if you just look at the line of what we would have left over if you focus on the salary line where we have 243,000 yeah. if you do there's say four and a half 4.5 payrolls left um say a payroll is 45,000 ish um or thereabouts times 4.5 will be a little bit underspent there and so but that's expected because i didn't fill a manager position intentionally so i I'm, i have an open position with a, a librarian a children's librarian and that's i'm not looking to fill that till the fall so there is going to be savings and during the year end transfers for those of you who were here last this time or in the summer last time you know whatever we have left over some may go to compensated absences, um, which is like a sick leave payout, or we don't pay out for sick leave anymore, but like, you know, like vacation payout if somebody retires and they have like a lot of vacation and we have money set aside and I make a recommendation on that. So I check that every, uh, every six months or so to see where we are with that, as well as um, if we wanna put some money into say the library reserve account, Currently, we have like 150,000 in the library reserve account because when I say I would like to recarpet the lower or refloor the car lower level um, because it's coffee stained in the community room and goodness knows what happens in the children's department, um, that's not necessarily seen as perhaps a, it's a priority to me, but it may not be a priority to say um, the capital improvements project. And it's not just like a big project it's not big enough and so um sometimes we may just have to do it on our own and this is like one way to you know to do that as well so um we have some money set aside we didn't put any into the library reserve last time um uh so you know there's that um and sometimes you may want to revert whatever's remaining back to the town's general fund and, and vote to do that and it's a recommendation that you're all voting on um but yeah, so that's, uh, you know, and for the most part, everybody's been really good about that. So um, any, so any questions about that or what we might have left over? No. Were you able to, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry, Michelle. Oh, you're fine. Were you able to find a creative way to use the grant, or has that all been tied up? So that's my next topic point. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go on that one next. Um, is there uh, any more questions about? Okay. Um, the America Rescue Plan. Um, we're slated to receive the twenty approximately $20,000. It looks like our approach is going to end up being um, asking for a variety of things. Um, some libraries are just doing one single thing. Um, that's not quite what we're doing here. Um, and we're still fact finding. I recently walked through with um, Sally Katz and uh, again, Charlie Brown to see is there anything um, that I can purchase that would make sense or, or work or that could possibly be approved. Um, and so what I call the less exciting things, more to do with like say the physical plant that we're looking to do. Um, we do have some um, Plexi that we will be looking to purchase so I can add additional computer workstations. And I really need to do that in the teen and children's area. Charlie was significantly less concerned with the computers that are in the cubicles in the adult reference area, nonfiction by the large print. Um, he seemed less, a lot less concerned about that. Um, that's going to be a negligible expense, not very, not very expensive. Um, the water fountains with bubblers, we're looking to not just get one, but to get two of those. Um, those are each less than a couple grand a, a piece. Um, we have one downstairs, uh, uh, just a water fountain on the lower level. Um, and then we're looking to put one up on the first floor. We did have a coffee bar, um, but we haven't had one for a number of years and we're not able to find the coffee machine that we want um, that fits that current cabinetry that we have there. Um, and so we're just not able to get what we had previously. And we have been shopping in earnest a couple, uh, like about a, well, before the pandemic, but even prior to that. And just couldn't find it uh, what we wanted. So people enjoy being able to buy like a you know a dollar twenty five coffee, uh, but they we also get equal demand for people requesting. Do you have like a water fountain up here, or do you have um, a water you know a bubbler? Um, so we are looking to do that. We are looking to pur purchase um, about a year's supply of air filters because instead of changing out the air filters. Um, quarterly, they're doing it like monthly for air circ, and that's a good thing. So we are looking to do that as well. Um, after speaking with Charlie, we will not be doing any enhanced cleaning after the end of the fiscal year. Um, and so that's our midday quarter. And I've already communicated with the cleaning company about this, um, that we're just going to do our over regular overnight cleaning, which is part of it. Enhanced cleaning was part of ARPA, um, was an eligible expense. But if we're if it's not something that he feels that we really need, then we're just we're gonna move on and, and stuff. Um, though we've really liked it, the building's never been cleaner. So, um, but it's we're gonna after the end of the fiscal year, we're wrapping that up. Um, uh, and we are continuing to check with the state library. Um, and work with them. My managers have attended session. They've started reaching back to find out what's eligible. The directors have gotten together in virtual meetings to go, somebody's doing like outdoor lockers to put, you know, put stuff and just some very uh, different ideas and solutions. I would like a, a I'd like a project, a new projection system for our community room, but as well as our program room. Um, so sometimes we do have meetings in the program room and I have this a whole wall and I have no projector and you're bringing in this, you know, old <laughs> projector trying to set it up on a table and that's in the children's program room. Um, and I'm, we're trying, so there's a few more things that we're just trying. And I'm also looking into if workforce development can be part of this. Um, so we still have a few more things that we're waiting to hear back, back from the state library. The state library has been really great about having multiple information <laughs> sessions um, to help you know, 160 public libraries like work through this process. So I do, uh, you know, to their credit and to the credit of IMLS, I do think we're perhaps a little bit further along with eligible expenses, um, even though it's restricted that, we, that we're working through this to get as creative as possible. Um, so I, what my plan is, is to have 
to have my ideas either a, kind of tentatively approved or shot down by the state library so that when I come to you guys in June, I'm like, this is it, June 22nd, and I have to submit it by June 30th. And yeah. I would still have a couple days if there's something last minute that I need to check or cross check. Or, you know, whatever. So, okay. um, and, excuse me, Hannah, you got Brooke's statement that the state library has been really great. That, that was the direct quote, I think. But anyway. So, yeah, not yet. And I did it with a straight face. <laughs> okay. But no, they have been cooperative with meetings and the staff are still hammering. What about this? What about this? And I'm like, yes, we could possibly do that. Uh, no. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. yeah um so that's kind of where does that answer your question michelle that's kind of where we are with the yeah. um and finally uh dates to pay attention to he already um uh kind of uh went over uh george did <coughs> the town um <coughs> is starting to have discussions about returning to in-person meetings and um we know that the council, I know that the council, it sounds like they would love to do in person for June 7th um, meeting. And, but there's like members of the public who really like that it's recorded and they can watch it from home and they don't have to come out. So there is, and I don't know that they have the technology <coughs> to actually do it at the same time the way Zoom and do that because I think they're recording it for live cable. There's some, thing and so and then you have to social distance still at least june 7th we're going to still be social distancing um and they're going to have more members of the public attend their meeting as opposed to say the library board we don't get as many uh, members from the public coming to our meeting so we can probably have an easier time pulling it off and still maintaining social distance. And even if you had a couple members of the public, if we were in say town council chambers, we'd probably be okay. Right now I have a whole lot of furniture that I am slowly removing out of the community room and adding to the public floor. But as I add like a single chair, I still have three more I haven't put out for a particular table. So that's still taking up space in some of the, you know, some of these rooms. We have opened up the ground level conference room as a study, like kind of, it's a meeting room, but it's a study room and we allow three people in there. They can open the windows, they can open the door. You can social distance in that room with three people. Um, so I was reviewing a lot of this with um, Charlie Brown and as we move towards, especially July 1st, how much more can we further, you know, open up these spaces. Um, and so the board meeting, any library board meeting will be the first meeting that we actually have within this facility. But if we're gonna do it sooner, it may end up being in town council chambers or at the community center um, because they have the ballroom and the, yeah. they're open up and they're pretty open in the fire side room. Is that what they call right. it? Fire side. Uh, yep. Yeah. So um, I would say the soonest maybe we attempt to do it and I, this would be up to the board but my recommendation is perhaps like say the september meeting would be maybe you know that um <laughs> we, we just you know if we can do the july meeting and have that maybe do a july meeting as well as year in transfers all in one go we can right. forego possibly if you wanted to forego an august meeting um and then just hit it in september um but I do, you know, I think in our, like, um, it, you know, um, the friends aren't attending our board meetings. And that's an important report that I think that we need to hear for at least from time to time. Um, and they're not really able to attend. Um, and so there's that, but then the, you know, the other side is like the convenience is just, is really fabulous. Um, but is there a contingent that all of the boards and commissions are kind of leaving out. Um, but people really like this. I know they like to see it. I try to post it as soon as I humanly can to our website um, that people can see what the library board is doing and engaged in. Um, you know, so that adds to more uh, government transparency, which is very, very important. And, you know, nothing against the minutes of our meeting that are fabulously done by Hannah and previously by George. 
Um, but you know, this might be more fun. <laughs> so I'm um, to review. Uh, the minutes are better because I can go back and watch the recording. Well, there's that too. Um, Let's be honest. And then the other aspect is like, we do live in Connecticut and it snows in the winter and this is nice. <laughs> It makes it easy, you know, or, you know, and the board is very kind when they're like, um, Brooke, you need to go home. It's snowing like an inch and a half, like you need to, you know, head out. And so, you know, there, that, you know, I, it's very kind, um, but there is that aspect as well. So, you know, something to kind of keep in mind, but I, I think the soonest, and I'm not sure what really, I have to do research on what the requirements moving forward are. Um, and so I don't know if there's like executive order. I'm, I'm not sure what we're required now as a board to do. You know, I'm not really sure what that dynamic is anymore. Um, and I think Gary has a, a slightly better sense and I need to just check and make sure that yeah, we're so we can take whatever our, the requirements are. We can take our cue from the town and uh, okay. So it will I be nice to mix. get together. I think a mix could work. <laughs> okay. So. Um, and that's what I have. That's what I have for the director's report. Okay. Well, don't go away because there the governance go. committee report is next. And uh, it okay. looks like uh, there's more to it than there is. Not, not, uh, and I guess we should have some discussion first and then we can address these motions. But the first two items are the discontinuation of the deselection of materials policy and the selection of materials policy. <clears throat> and that is not because we no longer care about selecting or deselecting, but uh, Brooke and the, uh, uh, the managers and staff have put together a uh, policy that we think covers all of that uh, very effectively. Uh, but that is up to the rest of you. So, Brooke, I, I could pretend to explain what's in here, but uh, you actually know, so maybe you can walk us through. Absolutely. Um, so which policy did you want? Well, me to they, why, we're discontinuing those two, first okay. of all, because they really are uh, incorporated into the uh, uh, collection development and maintenance policy. policy. Yeah, so... Um, we were we tried to outline if we look at the if we look at the collection development and maintenance policy any this is really getting to who and why we select what we select or the crate i'm sorry with the criteria that we use for selection that the library staff use for selection um anything related to a patron and their the use of the collection that's covered in the freedom of use. Um, and so we have the purpose um, outlined in here that we are kind of like, regardless of for agnostic about format, formats change so rapidly, we just can't get caught up, get overly caught up in that. And the overall objective is that we provide materials that meet the information, educational, and recreational needs of the Weathersfield community. Um, this policy talks about who is responsible for collection, the collection development and maintenance, um, and it's staff that I designate. 99% um, of the time that is professional librarians, um, and on some other occasions it's other staff who may have expertise. I have a, a staff member who's like has a master's in art, <laughs> and so she's very helpful, and, and she's not a professional librarian, but she's very helpful in the art collection and has been working on that um, with a librarian and they're, they're actually working together. Um, and that's been very helpful that you utilize the expertise you actually have, you know, in your facility. So, um, and ultimately I am the one responsible for the entire uh, collection, library collection um, that does fall with, with me. Um, the, the selection, um, this first paragraph in selection um, that uh, the commitment to intellectual freedom. This is follows the exact wording that we utilize in the freedom of use policy that was just passed last month. Um, uh, you know, and then we just have 
you know, different things in this policy. I'm assuming most people are on the committee and I'm assuming everyone who isn't on the committee has, has read this. Um, you know, any borrower can make recommendations for, for us to consider. Um, you know, we're basing it not on anticipated approval or disapproval that we know that the book may be hated or loved, you know, like doesn't, that's not, doesn't really equate into whether we purchase the item, it may go into how many items we actually purchase um, of that particular title. Um, we're not inhibited by that it may come into the possession of children. Um, we do not um, show approval, the library staff do not show approval or disapproval of a particular book. Um, we use standard cataloging methods as well. Um, everything's on the open shelf unless we're protecting it, um, you know, especially for mutilation or theft. Um, and so we may designate things as, as reference, but they're still basically on the open shelves anyway. Um, we use reviews um, from primary sources. These are not, when we talk about professionally recognized resources, these are not Amazon reviews. Um, and so, and, and that's difficult for like, say a self-published author or a local author if they're not well known. Um, and so occasionally we do glance at the Amazon reviews that are often written by their family members, but um, you know, we, we are using other resources for this and we don't limit ourselves to say the New York Times bestseller list. We look at multiple resources um, uh, to, for our selection. Um, and then the, there's a bulleted list of uh, additional criteria, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, local interest. Um, is it available? That's often like, you know, Amazon will not release the marvelous Miss Maisel. <laughs> like we can't get that. Um, we may have funding restrictions. You know, I don't have an unlimited book budget, you know? And so um, we take into mind a reader request. I mentioned that before, there could be a community need um, it could just be very, very popular. And then trying to really leverage the shared collection of other locations that we have access for the most part to other libraries uh, with locally within our consortium or within the state of Connecticut or nationwide. Um, so we do interlibrary loan. Um, so that's important. We do not go after textbooks. Um, the portion on gifts and donations, we worked on that through um, the financial um, policies. Um, so at some point we'll need to slightly revise that, um, but we've decided to make that a refer a referral. And then we'll get into the deselection of why we would have things removed from our collection. And it has a bulleted list here of why we'd remove things. Um, and then if, uh, and then what we do with our withdrawn materials. Um, and then at the very end that if someone injects and wants it removed from the collection um, because they object to it being in the collection, they can fill out, there's a process for that. Um, they can submit a statement of concern. Um, and so we're gonna revise that particular form as well. Um, so that's, what I'm proposing, and then as a result, if this is approved, we would no longer need, this is meant to replace the selection policy and the deselection policy that's currently posted on the website that I included links to. Right, so let's, why don't we do this? We'll, we'll have one motion, I would entertain one motion to approve the discontinuance of the deselection and selection of materials policies. I move that we approve the discontinuation of the selection policy and the deselection policy. Okay, Lori moves second. I'll second that. And Michelle, uh, uh, any other questions about that or discussion? Hey, Lori, can you say it again? I got it. Thanks, like, Anna. Yes, I move. No, sorry, <laughs> I, I apologize. No, my end, I heard you go, I heard you to deselection. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> I move that we approve the discontinuation of the selection policy and the deselection policy. You want to email it to you? <laughs> oh, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there is no further discussion, then uh, we'll call the roll. Uh, Lori? Yes. And Amanda. 
Terry. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Uh, Michelle. Aye. And Mary. Aye. And I'm an aye. So that is uh, approved. And next, uh, we need a motion to approve the adoption of the new collection development and maintenance policy. It, 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 Hannah, if you have that, somebody can just say so moved. So, so, so moved. <laughs> How's <Ready>? that? <laughs> I don't think any of us wanted to say it. <laughs> it's a long, it's a tongue twister. I'll second yeah. that. <laughs> okay. It's, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions or discussion about this? Even if you didn't attend the governance committee meetings, we welcome any comments that, but hearing none, uh, we'll call the roll on this one. Lori? Yes. Amanda? Aye. Terry? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Mary? Aye. And I'm an I. So that takes care of the new collection development and maintenance policy. Uh, the next one is the tutoring, revised tutoring policy. And Brooke, I guess if you could just explain what we're trying to do there. I hope, I think everyone has read the policy. Uh, but you are muted, I think. Okay, unmuted. Okay. All right. Let me just, I'm just pulling it up on my screen. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I think our discussion basically was, we, we wanted to make it clear uh, that while we uh, will assist, we don't endorse any particular uh, tutors or tutoring programs. Uh, and this is not a place for promotion advertising of, of those services. Uh, we assist uh, tutors and students uh, as library users. Uh, and we're not going to uh, uh, replace parental guidance. That's, that's basically uh, those decisions are up to the, uh, uh, to the parents about uh, who's going to tutor and uh, the, the, any supervision. Uh, anything else that, that we want to highlight there, Brooke? I, I just feel like it's a very, it's a more positive statement yeah. to the tutoring community um, or, or policy towards the tutoring community. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of libraries when we did like an environmental scan of what other libraries are, they are not doing, to, some do not permit that activity at all. And um, we do not, uh, we blessedly so, we do not have whatever that negative dynamic is um, going on, we don't have that here. And it's only, for the most part, it's been very, very positive. And if we've needed you know, to ask a tutor to do something or a student to do something different, it's never been a problem. So um, we feel it's good. We feel we have the space. Um, and, I, and I think it's a, it's a benefit to the community. So, so far it's been working. And I think that's, that this statement reflects that um in a in a in a positive way okay so uh, <clears throat> all right i guess where we are is we need a motion to accept the revised uh tutoring policy i'll make a motion to accept the revision of the tutoring policy okay amanda move i'll second here. okay uh Lori seconds. Any other questions or discussion about that? Seeing none, uh, we'll call the roll. Lori? Aye. <clears throat> Amanda? Aye. Terry? Aye. Anna? Aye. Michelle? Aye. <clears throat> Mary? 
I. And I'm an I. So that uh, <clears throat> motion passes as well. And last, we have the revision of the proctoring policy. Uh, I'll pull that up too, but uh, Brooke, I guess I, I would, uh, uh, I know you spent some time looking at the current and proposed policy. Uh, what, what's the basic approach toward proctors? Well, um, they call us and ask if we offer the service is kind of, and we do. Um, some libraries charge. Uh, we do not want to go in that direction at all. Um, th that's kind of my sentiment as well as the staff's. Um, it is not onerous. We don't get such a demand um, for that. Um, and we feel the, the current proctoring policy, I'm trying not to get tutoring and proctoring mess up. The current proctoring policy did not reflect reality of at all what was going on <laughs> um, for the procedures and stuff. And so this is a far more accurate reflection. Um, and uh, we don't feel that it's so burdensome to us. Um, and, but we do feel that this is really does reflect reality. Um, and we're very crystal clear what we can and cannot do. Um, and so we felt that the guidelines that we're presenting in here are, are just realistic. Um, and, and so that's, you know, currently we only have one staff member who actually administers pro proctors. Um, and we wanted to be clear that it could be a variety of our staff members and we would need to train them to, you know, the procedures that we do and try to follow, but. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's the, 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 the especially good part of this policy. It does make much clearer what, what the role of the library staff is in proctoring and the limits on that role. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a good, a, another good service that we offered. And uh, I think it's also good that the staff feels that it's something we can continue yeah. to do. And we, in a typical year, um, back in the day, <laughs> BC before COVID, um, uh, we would do like one to two to two a month exams it's how many we that's the workload um i think other libraries do a, a few more and some charge some charge as high as is 25 dollars, and we were like oh no we don't want to that's not and and this is typically is it for professional type uh it's for a variety of things it's it? for okay. students from you know college colleges universities um we had huh. one that was doing a sailing a boat exam of some sort um, and then we do have like professional development where you know they have to get you know certified in something or yeah yeah okay uh all right i think that gives a, a good overview is there a motion to approve uh, the revision of the proctoring policy I i'll make a motion to approve amanda second I'll second it because otherwise it's the Amanda, Lori, or Michelle show tonight. Okay, Mary tried well, to tie it. Mary. Well, yeah, and see, Mary, I I've probably haven't heard Mary a couple of times when she's wanted to proceed. I'm I apologize. Uh, but Mary can do it. That's fine. You can put her on there. Okay, I'll leave that up to our secretary. Uh, we will now vote. Lori. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Barry. Hannah. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Mary. Aye. And I'm an I. And that uh, that means we've adopted that revision. And uh, I believe. 
we've come to the end of the agenda. Is that right, Book? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Mary, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, I adjourn. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this one more time. Uh, we'll go back, Mary. Yes, motion to adjourn. Okay, and you vote aye. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Terry. Aye. Amanda. Aye. Lori. Aye. And I will also vote aye. We are done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good, yeah. night. Good work. We got about done. <laughs> Good meeting. Nice job, George. <laughs>